Okay. I'm going to transfer information from the circle to the function graph on the right. Now, this is a little bit of an unfortunate. They're using the variables x and y, but the x is really an angle measurement, an angle measurement in radians. Yes, you could do it in degrees, but we're not. We're going to do it in radians because we don't like you. But it's an angle measurement. So, yes, they could have just written sine theta instead of sine x. I just don't want you to get a little bit confused because we've talked about the, the different trig functions and how they relate to the circle. They're also asking me to graph the sine. Now, on the unit circle, are those x values, y values, or slopes? Those are y values. So they are asking me to compare angle measurements with their y values on the unit circle and to create a function which will pass a line test, blah, 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 blah. All right. So walk through this with me. At zero radians, which is over here on the edge of the circle, what is the y value? Ah, that is zero. How about at the top of the circle, pi over two, what is the y value? One. Thank you very much for all of you. How about pi? What is the y value? Y value? Zero. You just got to keep in mind, it's, I'm not asking about X's because people get X's and Y's confused in their mind pretty quickly. That's why I keep drawing a little horizontal line. Okay. When we get down to the bottom at 3 pi over 2, what is the Y value? Negative. Thank you. Negative 1. Good answers, everybody. And then when we get to back to 2 pi, yes, we are back to 0. Okay, so let's graph this out. 0, 0. Yep, let it all out. You can't keep that stuff in, otherwise it damages stuff. Seriously. Yeah. No, just... Just let it go, like Elsa said. Um, about Elsa? No, she said let it go. Whether that's wind or rain or snow, let it go. Okay? That's right. The sneeze doesn't bother me anyway. I think it's what it's... You know. Okay, sorry for the bad looking two pie at the end. And yes, that was recorded in the video. All right, now, what we just found was we had, yeah, I'll just stick with orange. I wish they had red, but pfft. I know they don't. It's ridiculous. I'm a teacher, and I don't even have a red pen to use. Okay, pi over two is at one. Pi is back to 0, 3 pi over 2 down to negative 1, and 2 pi back to 0. Now, we could go through and we could pick pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, 4 pi over, you know, we could go through all the different values on the circle, but I don't want to waste your time, okay? You're going to get a shape that looks like this, okay? Do your best to give it a little bit of curve. Don't make it some sort of stick figure V thing upside, you know, where you're just like, eh, eh, eh. okay? Try. Try to give it a little curve, okay? Now, if I had gone past 2 pi, it would continue this forever and ever and ever that way. If I had gone to the left side, guess what? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. 
Now, how many of these things do I want you to draw? Do I really want you to draw on 17 of them? No. Okay. Pretty much we're going to draw one of them, maybe put some arrows on the end and be done with it. Okay. If you understand how to draw one cycle, I'm pretty sure you could duplicate it. Okay. Now. What is the center line of the wave? What is the line that goes right down the middle of the wave? What is the center line? Okay, you and your neighbors need to talk about the equation of that line. You got about 20 seconds. Figure it out. What's the center line of that wave? Center line of the wave. You at home, throw it in the chat. I'll freeze it on screen so they can't see your responses. Only one of you. There you go, Mr. Min. Nicely done. Nice job, Bratton. Nice job, Cobbler. If you draw me a zero uh, and a number, sorry, I didn't want to say it out loud. If you draw me a number and you're, uh, it's not an equation, you lose. Okay. Is that what your question was? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure you would die before that would happen, but okay. <laughs> How did he die? Drawing an infinite number of cycles of the sine wave. Wow, that's that's sad right there. That is, uh, that is sad, man. Okay. Eventually, he'd get all the way around to the end of the earth, you know, around the whole planet. Okay. All right, what's the center line? Y equals zero. Thank you very much. If you started it out with X equals, that's a vertical line, by the way. Now, I do understand that the cute nickname for that line is the X axis, but it's real name. You know, when it goes to sign, you know, medical forms or government documents, it signs Y equals zero. That's the real name. Just like me when I sign my name. The I have to sign it differently for the government than I do, you know, for other things. But, you know, you'll have to figure that out on your own. What is the period of the wave? This term right here represents um, the length of one cycle. How long does it take to repeat the pattern? The length of one cycle. Okay. So one person online and one person in the room thinks it's 2 pi. They both agree with each other. Do you agree with that? Does it take 2 pi units to start over again? Okay, well, I think you, you should because that is true. It does take 2 pi units to start over again. Okay, so the next term is amplitude, amplitude. The amplitude is the distance, okay? I know there's an energy drink that's abbreviated. It's the abbreviation for amplitude, but um, you've never seen amp? Okay. Oh, highly dedicated Red Bull fan. No rains, no bang, none of that. The rains, I actually, I have, I have tried a couple of those flavors. Those are kind of good. I don't, I don't often drink those, but it was a challenge by my sons. <laughs> what is the distance? If you've had physics before, you've probably seen this kind of stuff before. From the center line to the top or the center line to the bottom is the definition of amplitude. What is that length for this particular graph? It is one unit. The amplitude is one unit. It's from the center. You can see how I've drawn it from the center to the top or from the center to the bottom. It doesn't matter. So each one of these represents the amplitude. Now, I want to go through 
because I don't make a table every time, folks, I want to go through my favorite way to graph these things because I want you to get comfortable enough that you can graph the five major points and draw the curve. There is a particular order that I like to go in, and I'll show you why. The first thing I want to do is find a starting point, and that starting point is this one right here. It's actually labeled HK for reasons that will make sense later. And in this case, it's 0, 0. H and K represent the phase shift and the vertical shift, which you remember from pre-calc. That's the left and right shift and the up and down shift. None of that has happened in these functions. Yes, we will be doing fireproof form. It will not, nor will it ever, go away from you. Okay. So... I want to describe where HK sits in relationship on a sine wave. First of all, you should know that it sits on the center line. I will say GoFormative needs to get a little smoother on the writing. Because that bugs me. I mean, my handwriting isn't great, but it's, it's better than that. Oh, yeah. It's just, or you go to draw a circle and it makes it look like some sort of half circle in a flat line. It's like, what in the heck just happened? The other, the other description I would give to you is, um, it's going to be a little bit less mathematical. It does require you to think about moving from left to right through the graph because I'm going to say, on the way up the hill. I know that's not mathematical. It does require that you think about it going from left to right. On the way up the hill. That is the first of the five points that I always graph. Okay, the next point. The next point that I graph, point number two, see, look at that, that was a horrible looking two, is this one all the way over here. In other words, I use the period of the function to go all the way to the end where I know it's going to start the process over again. That's my second point. Now, your other three points have to be between those two. My third point is this one right here. Notice that my first three points are all on the center line. I do the, the starting point, the beginning of the next one, and then I come back to the middle. Point number four is this one up here. See, it did that to me again. I don't like that. All right. So I go between the first two points points and I go use the amplitude and go up and then for the fifth point I take the second two points and I take the amplitude and go down those are my five points that I like to graph on a sine wave when we get to cosine I'll have five different points and I'll show you why I graph them differently Yes, you will need to practice, and you will need my help. I do understand that, um, which is why I'm going to. I want to find. I want to find a video that I've already made for you to watch tonight. Probably about thirty minutes. I do not want to send you into homework problems because by the time we get done, you won't have enough info to keep to 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 make any progress forward. Yes. Okay. The fourth one is this one up here. I know it doesn't look too much like a four, but so. One, two, three, sit on that center line. And then the first one's up and the, or the fourth one's up and the fifth one's down. Now, I will tell you this. If I had a negative multiplier, that would flip the whole graph. I hereby solemnly swear I will not put a negative multiplier on any test. Okay. The reason I won't is because you guys have too many problems with shrinking, stretching, shifting left, shipping right, up, down. You can't handle anything more. Not at this stage of the game. 
So I will stay away from reflecting the graph because we just need to figure out how to move the thing around, stretch it and shrink it, okay? That'll be enough for us. Um, any questions about this before I move on so far? Okay, we need to go to page two. Oh, and I need to, need to come over to the question. Oops, that's not what I want. This is what I want. And I need to draw this in for you. That's theta. Zero pi over two pi. Three pi over two. Two pi. Okay, once again, x is the theta, the angle measurements. What are we dealing with now? Cosine. These are x values, right? X values on the unit cir circle. So we're comparing angle measurements to x values. What is the x value at zero radians? The x value at zero radians. Uh, nope. One, right? Because it's an X value. It's all the way to the right. Ask your question, Miss Lamptey. Okay. Once again, let me, let, you know, I understand that the difficulty here is that we normally, like when we make a parabola or something else in all of your Algebra 2 days, we always used X and Y, right? Well, that's unfortunate in this particular situation because in this case, we're talking about theta. Now, if you want me to give it another name like Z, I don't care. But the reality is you're dealing not with, you know, you're dealing with angle measurements and X values on the unit circle. And I understand that that gets confusing. But the actual x value here at zero radians is one. How about pi over two? What is the x value at pi over two? Zero. That is back to zero. How about the x value at pi? Negative one. Okay. You sound like, you sound like, uh, what is that? Despicable me. Is it two? Despicable me two with a little girl is like, you fix my boo-boos. You know, that. that's exactly what he sounds like. You know, the little girl, you know, with the, yes, Agnes with the, she's so fluffy, you know. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what he sounds like. No? Okay, you need to find that, that speech about her mother. Agnes and the speech about her mother. She fixes my boo-boos. Yep, she braids my hair. You got it, right there, Agnes. Okay, three pi over two, what's the X value at three pi over two? Zero. When we get back to two pi, we are back to one. So now we need to graph this thing. At zero, we're up here at one. At pi over two, we're at zero. At pi, we're at negative one. At three pi over two, we're at zero. At two pi, we're back to one. There are lots of things that have repeated patterns where we like to stretch these things out and look for abnormalities. Your heartbeat does not follow a cosine or sine pattern, but it does follow a rhythmic pattern over and over and over again. 
And when they monitor that, you can watch that pattern. And if they see something that looks different in the pattern, then they look into it and try to figure out what's going on. But it's the same idea. They're, they're stretching something out to see what's going on. And in case you're wondering, when we generate electricity, we usually have something that spins, like a generator. Some of them are small and some of them are really, really big. But it transfers things into electricity. They refer to it as alternating current because it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yes, this thing goes on forever and ever, just like the other one. Answer the three questions, period, amplitude, and center line. Go, and period, amplitude, and center line. I shall pause while you do this. Go. I like that one, that one. That bottom one needs to be an equation of a line. Well done. Yes, you may. Let me grab an orange pass for you. Fill that out and I'll sign it for you. No, but, but x equals zero, just think of that. That's the y-axis. The line that runs through the middle of this, when you look at that, these are always going to be y equals zero. Center line is always going to be y equals zero. Now, I will talk to you about what might happen here in a second to that, but at the moment, you're right, you're right, you're right. Nice job. There you go. Well done. Yep. Yep. Oops. Sorry. What are you thinking? Well, remember it's from the center to the top. Correct. Good answers. Us. Now, is that an X or a Y? Yes, it is. Yep, yep, yep. Because it's this horizontal line that's coming right through. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. From the center to the top or center to the bottom. And your, your center line has to be a horizontal line. All right, Cobbler, what do you think about the period? Hmm. Yes, Miss Bratton. Cobbler, what are you thinking? Correct. 2 pi is the correct value. 2 pi is the correct period of that function. Thank you very much, Cobbler and Bratton. How about the amplitude? How high is it from the center line to the top or the center line to the bottom? One unit, right? And the equation of the center line is the same, y equals zero, okay? It's the horizontal line that cuts right down the middle. Yes, Miss Addo, go. Okay, well, first of all, amplitude is always defined as a distance. So being a distance, it's going to be positive. And we're just measuring from that center line to the top or from the center line to the bottom. But that's it. You're just measuring that distance only and saying, okay, it is one unit. Okay. What we're saying is how long does it take when it starts here and it starts the pattern over again? Okay. And it took two pi units and can't see it. Okay, go ahead, Miss Braden. Sorry you're having difficulty. Oh, why did I do that? Well, I bet, I bet that time. Miss Bratton, is it like just frozen or going completely black on you? Okay. All right, that's weird. Okay, so here are the five points that I like to graph. 
in the order that I like to graph them. First of all, I need to find HK. HK is sitting right there. It is still the point zero, 00 because this graph has not been shifted left, right, up, or down. But you'll notice that HK does not actually sit on the wave, does it? No. So we're going to use that point as kind of a starting location. Yes, it's on the center line. But as Sebastian from The Little Mermaid once said, it's, he sang a song about it, Under the Max. Wasn't it? Under the Max. Oh, my goodness. Look at that capital M. <laughs> Seriously. It's ridiculous. So I use this to springboard up and find my first location at the top of that wave. That's my first point that I always graph on a cosine function. Then I use the period to slide all the way over to point number two at the top of the next hill, where it's going to start repeating the pattern over again. Oh, thank you, Ms. Hannah. Then I come back here and I slide all the way down to the bottom of the wave. Please notice that point number three is in the middle, but it is not on the center line. It is below the center line. Sometimes I have kids that think that the third point sits on the center line. And I'm like, well, wait a second. The amplitude would have to take you below the center line. So we've got one, two, three. Four and five are extremely easy to find because they are Connecting points. You basically can draw a line straight to it and find it. No, I don't want you to make these into Vs. Okay? Give it a little bit of curve. Try. Don't make some all boxy looking things. Try to give it a little curve. Is there a question or stretching? Must have been stretching. Now, I'll have to demonstrate for you at home here, but I need to demonstrate quickly in the room. Um, there is a movie that has the cosine wave in it, okay? So I'll have to demonstrate it for you guys here, and then I'll try to do it for the people at home, all right? Where are my Karate Kid 1 original fans? Karate Kid 1 original. Yeah, Karate Kid 1 originals? Don't tell me the Jaden Smith one, please. Oh, my goodness. Okay, if you haven't seen it, homework time. All right. And the famous move in Karate Kid 1? The cosine wave, right? Sorry, lost my balance. All right, try it again, right? The crane move, right? That's the cosine wave. Just look at it. They, they embedded it in the movie for crying out loud. Yes, folks, I was trying to demonstrate the crane move from Karate Kid 1. Yes, I do. Great movies. All right, so uh, let's see here. What was my next point? Mm -mm -mm. I think that's enough information for the cosine function. We need to go on to the... Oh, um, I have a couple quick questions for you to think through. I don't want to take a bunch of time right now. If I were to take this graph and shrink it horizontally, so just watch my hands, shrink it horizontally, would that change the period? Would it change the amplitude? Would it change neither or both? Definitely the period, and that's the only thing it would change, okay? If you did a shrink or a stretch in the horizontal direction, the only thing that would change, imagine like a slinky kind of thing, you know, that it would change the period, but it would never change the amplitude. 
Now, if I do a vertical stretch or shrink, right? I'm messing with the vertical only. That just changes the amplitude, right? Just the amplitude, right? That's going to stretch or shrink the, the maxes and mins. So the amplitude will be different. Um, what if I take this graph and I shift it to the left? Just take the whole thing and slide it to the left. Will it change the period in the amplitude or neither or both? It won't change any of that stuff. You're right. Sliding this to the left isn't going to do anything to the period or amplitude. Oh, you were ahead of me. That was my next question. If I slide this up or down, will the center line change? Answer is yes. Okay. Now, we're going to do all those changes, all the scale changes, all the shrinking and stretching and shifting left, right, up, down. All that good fireproof form stuff you never wanted to remember, but you're going to have to. Um, the one thing I won't do are the reflections. I will not get into the reflections because that adds another twist that just is kind of over the top for right now. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> There'll be a lot more to it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It gets a lot cooler. Oh, okay. That's nice. All right. So... Let me edit the background for all of you here. Sorry for not doing this earlier. We got the X's and Y's. We're doing the tangent function this time. Um, I'm going to have negative pi over 2, dot, 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 negative pi over 4, 0, pi over 4, dot, 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 and pi over 2. Okay. So let's come back over here. And take a look at what's going on. Tangents are slopes, right? What is the slope at zero radians? What is the slope at zero radians? Zero, right? The slope is zero. That's that whole cross-country skiing thing. What about the slope at positive pi over 4? Positive pi over 4. What is that slope? 1. Now, as we increase above pi over 4. Getting closer and closer and closer to pi over 2. What's happening to those slopes? Are they getting bigger or smaller? They're getting bigger. The slopes are getting bigger. Now, I'm not going to sit there and list out a whole bunch of points because you understand when you look at that that the slopes are getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. At pi over 2, what do you have? Undefined, which, let's see now, what, what does that remind you of? No. <laughs> Not cross-country skiing. Where have you seen that before? A dotted vertical line? Oh, it's an asymptote to the function. Thank you very much. None of the other ones had that. This one does. We're going to have an undefined value here at negative pi over 2. Correct. What's the slope at negative pi over 4? Negative 1, right? Negative 1. And these, as you continue to go down and down and down, they get negative and they're steeper and steeper and steeper. So this, yeah, you can, you can use the term smaller because of the negative. Now. Stay with me. Don't go to the light yet. What you're going to get is, so 0, 0, it's not graphing, pi over 4, 1, pi, negative pi over 4, negative 1. What you're going to get is something that looks like this. And yes, I know that looks an awful lot like y equals x cubed, but y equals x cubed doesn't have vertical asymptotes. What's the period of this function? Look at it with me. What is the period of this function? How often does it take to complete the pattern over and over and over? Don't, it is only 1 pi. Thank you very much. It is not 2 pi like the other ones. Okay. What's the center line of the wave? Isn't it still y equals 0? How about that amplitude? 
does not exist. That's right. There is no amplitude because you can't measure the distance to the top or bottom. And don't try to throw infinity at me. It doesn't exist. There is nothing for the amplitude. Okay. I will, I will check on my videos and send you an email about which one I want you to watch um, to kind of get you ready for tomorrow so we can work together. If you have any questions, stick around. Otherwise... Pay attention to your email. I'll try to sit down right now and get that sent off to you. All right, we'll see you later, guys. Have a great day.